touch screens in cars. Where do I even start with this? Car manufacturers have been moving ever more internal functionality from physical switchgear to touchscreen such that is now impacting driving safety. In today's episode, we discuss how we arrived at this position of tech craziness and what the future holds for touchscreens in cars. The early implementation of screens in cars was very expensive for manufacturers to adopt and was perceived a luxury. The first screen incorporated into a car was introduced in the Aston Martin Legonda in 1976. However, this didn't have a direct manipulation interface. This wasn't a touch screen. You actioned operations that were described to the driver through physical switch gear. The first touchscreen, however, was introduced in 1986 in the Buick Riviera. However, Buick discontinued this in 1990 due to the owners of the car saying that the screen was too onerous and distracting. Move forwards to the 2000s and due to the advancements in technology, screens became more prevalent in cars. And due to our take up of mobile devices with direct manipulation interfaces such as iPhone and Android devices, car manufacturers decided to try and introduce some of the functionality that interfaced with these mobile phones into cars and from around 2014 car manufacturers started to introduce functionality such as Apple and Android CarPlay into these screens into these touchscreen devices. Looking at it from the point of view of supercars and here with regards to Lamborghini and Ferrari Lamborghini introduced its first screen in the Lamborghini Gallardo in 2005 and a similar screen was adopted in the Lamborghini Aventador in 2011 however these screens didn't have a direct manipulation interface they weren't touch screens. It wasn't until 2019 when Lamborghini introduced its first touchscreen into one of its supercars and that was in the Lamborghini Huracan Evo. From the point of view of Ferrari, Ferrari first incorporated screens into its GT range with the Ferrari 612 Scaglietti in 2007 and the Ferrari California in 2008 but these screens didn't have a direct manipulation interface they weren't touchscreens. From the point of view of the Ferrari supercar range, Ferrari first incorporated screens from the Ferrari 458 onwards and there were two screens sat either side of a central tachometer and these screens were typically used to display infotainment system. So they're used to display information for satellite navigation, music controls and to display information from a reversing camera depending on whether or not those options had been chosen when the car had first been specified. The Ferrari supercar range from the 458, the 488 and the F8, they still had the same type of binnacle system whereby they had a center rev gauge and they had screens either side. They didn't really move on from that design. It was only with regards to the Roma, so the GT range of Ferrari in 2020 when they adopted a full blown touch screen. And this was like a massive iPad, which was in the center console. I never thought that looked good, but again, it is personal opinion. One of the biggest influences on car manufacturers with regards to touch screens though was Tesla. In 2005, Tesla introduced its first model, which was called the Roadster, and this had a rudimentary touchscreen. Moving forward to 2015, Tesla released the Model S, and then later in 2016, they released the Model X. These two models had substantial large screens as center consoles or in their center binnacles, and they removed most of the internal cabin functionality to these touch screens, and that was a big movement forward. And you could say then around that period of time, 2015, 2016, that was really when the movement really started moving forwards to adopt touchscreens in cars. It was almost like Tesla was the, was the fire that started it all burning. So why the change from physical switch gear to screens? Well, as I detailed earlier, in 1976, the Aston Martin Lagonda was one of the first adopters of a physical screen, though not a touch screen. And therefore, car manufacturers started, started adopting this more and more, and it was a steady progression. And of course, as I detailed earlier, it was really from 2015, 2016, the implementation of physical large touch screens in Teslas that it really started moving forward. But the early implementation of these screens was to provide feedback to the drivers. So feedback for reversing cameras, infotainment system and such like. So it was to help the drivers moving forward. Car manufacturers then started to think, okay, instead of providing expensive physical switch gear, what we'll do is we start advancing these screens so that instead of providing more physical switch, switches, which cost money, we'll start adding more software to these screens and start making them more intelligent. So we start providing the functionality in the screen. So instead of providing the cost of 
of Swiss physical switch gear. They just had to update the software, so new revisions of the software. And then in later cars, obviously put in more advanced screens in those cars. It was a steady progression. That gave the benefit to car manufacturers whereby it didn't show when cars were optioned low. So, you know, if you, if you physically didn't option certain functionality within a car, Previously, in the early days, when you had physical switch gear, what they used to do is put blanking plugs in, and it was very obvious that those cars were, were low in the options. Car manufacturers thought, okay, well, we don't have to provide those anymore. We don't put blanking plugs in. What we do is you just don't provide the functionality in the software. And then later on, if an owner decides to add some of this OEM functionality, then maybe the car manufacturer can switch it on by providing a firmware update. And of course the owner would pay more for that particular extra functionality that they were gaining. And it was a very simple thing for car manufacturers to add a, a new version of firmware or just to switch it on in software. It makes those operations of adding functionality a lot easier and a lot cheaper. Also, when car manufacturers had to start putting in these electronic actuators and sensors for these electronic operations that were controlled through physical touchscreens, at that stage, it was then cheaper for car manufacturers to provide all the sensors and all the electronic operators that could be actions from the electronic screens as a whole in the cars from new. So they didn't reduce those levels down because it was just cheaper for them to implement them all in one go rather than doing different versions of the cars on the production line. What they did though, was they switched that functionality on and off in software. With the implementation of these touchscreens though, they didn't sort of have a line where they decided that they weren't gonna cross with the, with the functionality that they would implement. They've just added more and more functionality to these touchscreens because it's easier and cheaper to do that. Such that you've now got mainstream operations that you'd need to perform while you're driving the car. And this is key, operations that you would need to perform while you're physically driving the car, they would start putting behind these touchscreens. Things like climate control, the, the implementation of headlights, the, the ability to move your seat fore and aft if it's electronically controlled, all these sorts of air and functionality, and of course, rever reversing camera capability, etc. So you could be in a situation where you're quite cold in, in the cabin of the car, so you want to increase the heat in the car, and you've got to go through physical screens. You've got to go through physical screen pages to be able to change the, 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 the air condition in the car. It's absolutely bloody ridiculous. It's very, very dangerous because there's a real safety issue here. When you're driving, you know, if you've got a large screen in the center console, you have to have to physically move your eyesight down to that physical screen. And it's not just the time it takes for you to physically move your eyesight down to that screen. It takes you time to recognize and to perceive the information on that screen. Say you're in a built up area and then you look down at this screen because the navigation system is telling you something, or maybe you want to again, change the climate controls, etc. And because, because you're quite cold in the car. And then somebody walks out in front of you in that split second, you could run them over. It's very, very dangerous. It's, it's, it's something that just should never have been implemented in these screens. Car manufacturers have crossed the line, in my opinion. They've, they've fast, fast substantially crossed the line. They're, they're really dangerous, these screens now. And this time frame with regards to looking down at the screen, that's just from the point of looking down and perceiving the information on the screen. You're, you're talking about a second or two just to do that let alone actually interfacing with the screen. If you're looking to actually change an operation on the screen, you've got to look down on the screen. So you're about a second to look down on the screen, maybe half a second or a second to perceive what the status of the screen is, what the screen is displaying. And then from there, if you're interacting to it, especially if you've got multiple pages that you've got to go into, forget it, you know, you're into serious accident territory at that stage. If you look at the review that we performed on the Lamborghini Huracan Technica, the Lamborghini Huracan Technica has a very large screen in its center console. And to be able to change the operations on the climate control, so to be able to make it warmer or colder, or just to actually look at what the settings are set to, you've got to look down at the screen, press the button to bring up the climate control page, and then you've got to interact with that climate control page. But by the time you've done that, you've got to look at the road, otherwise it's, it's just supremely dangerous. And then by the time we've done that, I think it's about a three to four second delay, the page goes back to the standard home page, and then you've got to press the flipping button again to bring up the climate controls again, and then you've got to look at the road again. You're into this iterative loop where you can't operate on the actual climate control functions because you just don't have the time to be able to look down on it unless you physically stop the car to change it. So you're into the situation where to change some of this functionality safely, you've got to pull over, physically change the settings through the touch screen and then start driving again. These cars aren't daily drivers. You're not going to be driving these cars all the time. So that causes a problem in itself because you're having to relearn these flipping interfaces all the time when you're getting into these into these cars. If you're enjoying the video so far, please give the video a thumbs up, give it a like. Very important for our channel. And if you enjoy our style of content, please think about subscribing.
Thankfully though, some car manufacturers have seen the sense and they decided not to implement screens in their cars. Now one of the key manufacturers to do that is Bugatti. Another manufacturer is now starting to think about whether or not they're going to carry on implementing screens in their cars is Mazda. Mazda are looking at reducing the amount of screens in their cars, reducing the amount of technology. And the reason they're doing this is for safety, but with regards to Bugatti, it's because they realize that the technology heavily dates cars. If you look back at the interior of the Bugatti Veyron, and the Bugatti Chiron, they're still classic. They're very iconic with their internal cabins. Those cabins aren't gonna be dated because they haven't got masses of technology in there. Or with regards to Chiron, they haven't got the obvious cues of technology in there. The technology's there, but it's not obvious. They haven't got whacking great big touch screens. What they've done with the Chiron is they put individual screens on some of the operations, on some of the buttons, and those screens purely provide feedback and they provide descriptions of what that functionality provides very very clever of Bugatti and that doesn't date the car. You've also got this situation with the advancement of technology where certain driver safety aids have been added to cars. Items such as lane assist. Now what car manufacturers have started to do is they've started to add this functionality but it's behind the flipping screen again. You can't switch it off unless you interface with this touch screen. Lane assist in my opinion is very invasive. So I was in a car driving with lane assist and it starts giving you vibration through the steering wheel. It flipping scares you, you know, it catches you off guard. And if it scares you and, and makes you jump, then you're likely to move the steering wheel and possibly cause an accident. So if lane assist doesn't cause you to have an accident, trying to switch the bugger off through the touch screen will cause an accident because you're looking down at the touch screen. And probably it's not on the home page. You've got to go through another page to get to the driver aids or driver safety aids to be able to switch the flipping thing off. It's just crazy. I mean, you've got a safety aid hidden behind a touch screen, which causes a safety issue. Go figure. I mean, it's just crazy. I don't think these car manufacturers really thought this through properly, or if they have, it's the bean counters that have thought it through. It's the bean counters that are saving money all the time. It's cheaper to do so, adding more functionality, charging the customer for this additional OEM functionality and hiding it behind touch screens because it's easier and cheaper for them to do so to add to software, but it's a lot harder for the driver to interface with and it's unsafe. That's the key problem. It's not safe. It's a major safety issue, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. NCAP, which stands for New Car Assessment Program, NCAP provide ratings for new car models for car manufacturers. They provide ratings up to five stars. If these NCAP ratings are high, then it's a marker for people. People look at these NCAP ratings to purchasing cars. NCAP have just released new guidelines that are coming into play in 2026. And these new guidelines, are recommended car manufacturers to move away from touch screens, so remove certain functionality out of their touch screens to physical buttons, to physical switch gear. Now, NCAP doesn't make these items compulsory, they can't, they're recommendations. But people do look at these NCAP ratings, and if this functionality isn't moved away from touch screens to physical switch gear, then NCAP will rate the cars lower with regards to their safety ratings, and that will affect car sales. Car manufacturers realize this, so car manufacturers will likely take on board these recommendations from NCAP and they'll start moving the functionality out from their touchscreens to physical switch gear. So this is a massive advancement forward. And again, just to reiterate, this is the NCAP safety ratings that are looking to be adopted or implemented for 2026. There is a bit of a caveat to that. And that is with regards to the actual operations that NCAP are recommended are removed from these touchscreens. For 2026, the operations that NCAP are recommending are removed from touchscreens to physical switch gear are indicators, hazard warning lights, windscreen wipers, horn and SOS features. Clearly that doesn't incorporate operations such as climate control and some of the other features that you'd be wanting to use while you're physically driving a car. So I think that really doesn't go far enough. I think they should be adding more operations to that list. Hopefully they will later on, but it's a start and that's the key thing, it's a start. And this is the start of a movement forward to start regressing the functionality that's provided in touch screens to more safety options of physical switch gear. So we're gonna start moving backwards. We're to start moving away from from functionality behind touch screens to physical switch gear i think this is a big win this is a big movement forward i'm i'm really pleased this is happening so where do we go from here well i think that the functional boundary of usefulness with the adoption of functionality within these touch screens has far surpassed usefulness and we've gone into this avert crazy level of where manufacturers are throwing the kitchen sink and they're just chucking as much functionality as they can behind these screens because it's cheaper to do so 
I think we far surpassed the level of safety. And I think that these end cap ratings are the first stage to move us back to adopting physical switch gear for operations that need to be performed while you're driving. I think this is a big movement forward and I think it's the first movement forward, hopefully of many. And I hopefully after that or, or before that or at the same time, legislation will come in where it will make it illegal for car manufacturers to put certain functionality through a direct manipulation interface through a touchscreen interface and they'll have to physically put in physical switch gear for certain operations. These end cap ratings are, are definitely a substantial movement forward for that and I think they're the turning point with this. I think they're the turning point for touchscreen functionality. If you want to see how functionality dates a car, you just have to look at cars like the, the Porsche 928 and the Aston Martin Lagonda. The Aston Martin Lagonda, if you look at the interior of an Aston Martin Lagonda, as you can see here, that car is really dated by its technology. If it was designed in more of an iconic styling, in more of a styling of its period, then that would have probably held value a lot better for the, for the Lagonda. Probably it dropped in value for other reasons as well but it would have held value a lot better if it had more of an iconic classic internal design instead of having these 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 screen interfaces instead of having all this internal electronic switch gear and you'll notice that supercar manufacturers such like ferrari don't adopt these large screens in their supercars, in their real key leading special edition supercars like the 458 Speciale, the 488 Pista and the 296 up and coming Vergiani Speciale, whatever that will be. That's because they know that it dates the cars and those cars will lose value quite quickly going forwards. If you imagine, if you look at the interior cabin of a 458 Speciale, it is classic, iconic design in the interior. Yes, it has its screens either side of the rev counter on, on the main binnacle, but that's fine. That's just providing feedback to the driver for infotainment system and for reversing camera, etc. They haven't got these big screens. They haven't got these big touch screens, which are flipping obvious as soon as you open the door and look inside the car. It's not dating the cabins of these cars. If they started adopting these large screens in these in these special editions, these Vergiani Speciali editions of their supercars, I think there'd be a key problem with value retention going forwards. And that has been the main one of the key reasons. I'm pretty sure the absolute reason why they haven't adopted these touch screens in their, in their Vergiani Speciali key supercar range. So I'm going to put this out to you now. What do you think? Do you think cars have become too technology laden? Do you think there's a safety issue with regards to these direct manipulation touchscreen interfaces with the functionality that's hidden behind them? And what do you think about Tesla and their adoption of the electronics that they adopt within their cars and these big technology touchscreen interfaces? Do you think that devalues their cars? Because the Teslas are so technology laden, I don't think it actually does devalue their cars because they are what they are. They're, they're, they're fully electronic anyway, so I don't think it really does devalue Teslas. Teslas are Teslas and people know what they're buying into. Maybe they just don't expect it in special edition Ferraris and special edition cars. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I really value your opinion.